Good morning and welcome to today's show. Firstly, I would like to introduce our, a main guest who is a member of the bourgeoisie and who is a member of the Jacobin and also the Cordelia Club. And they would like to explain a little bit more about what's going on. Thank you, Amber, for having me on the show. Uh, as a middle class worker, I've never had much of a say in France. Um, despite my hatred for it, my position in society means I can never change anything about it. But now that these two political clubs have emerged, the Jacobins and the Cordeliers, I can now have a say in politics. The many areas of France are isolated and not up to date with current affairs of the government. These political clubs allow anyone of any place to be informed on any daily issues and they will support election candidates and act in pressure groups to influence deputies in the assembly. They will promote actions which the deputies deem reluctant to undertake, provided with education and political participation. One of these clubs is the Jacobin Club. It has a high entrance fee due to the fact that their members are wealthy radical deputies. They combine their ideology with enlightenment thought and revolutionary practice. They rejected the tradition of a monarchy and they also are increasingly favoured of centralisation. The leader um, that they follow is Maximilien Robespierre, a very famous leader in the French Revolution. The significance of this club is that they allow a large number of people to be involved in politics when they come before. And then the second club is the Cordelier Club. They are more radical than the Jacobins and it has no membership fee as their members are not as rich, they are mainly working class members. They are fighting for direct democracy and the right to recall deputies and to rebel if the government acts against their wishes. It consists of many key members, Georges Danton, Camille Desmoulins, Jacques Ren Hébert, Brissot and Marat, all bourgeoisie lawyers and journalists. The rise of these political clubs are allowing all people of France... So, now on to, the, on to today's news report. It has now been a few weeks since the king fled to Varen, and we have all been reminded about the king's declaration. Maybe it is becoming apparent since his flee of the popularity of changes that have taken place since 1789. As we all remember, support for a republic grew and is still growing, and the king is admittedly being less popular. We must also report again that since the 24th of June, when 30,000 people marched to the National Assembly in support of a petition, from the Cordelier Club, calling for the dismissal from office. It has also been reported that royal ensigns and street names are rapidly disappearing all over Paris. Whether that is due to a strong wind last week or due to people not being supporting the king will, will be left to see. It seems more likely that the king may be replaced with a republic as it is rumoured that many more are openly talking about it. However, some feel that fear oh my god however some fear as this is said it may start a civil war against the european monarchs last week the assembly voted to suspend the king of which 290 abstained from voting as a protest radicals were appalled as he was not put on trial cordelius have now taken the lead and recently have asked the jacobins to join them they have set up a new club the Fudion, which has been declared today you for that report. Now, on to one of our other main topics in today's show. We have a Parisian worker who is uh, from the saint Arts, and I would now like to introduce them. Thank you, Amber, for having me on your show. You're very welcome. Um, so I am a working class Parisian who has joined the saint Arts. I joined them due to the fact that the saint Arts support their political group called the Cordelia. One of their leaders is called Georges Danton and he inspires me. He is a man of the people and he's from Paris, so he's fighting for the same things that I want. I need someone like him to speak for me, because me and the majority of the saint Colots are passive citizens and can't vote. What we want is represented in the aims of the Cordeliers, a direct, demo yeah, a direct democracy, the recall of the deputies to account for their actions if they went against the wishes of the people, and the right of insurrection if a government acted against popular wishes. Many people view us as very radical, but this is true because we were responsible for the storming of the Bastille and bringing the royal family into Paris during the October days. The reason why we are uprising is due to many factors, but mostly economical. One is due to inflation, as the government is printing more and more asinats, lowering its value and causing, it to be, causing us to be poorer. We strike in 1791 because of this. 
Then we have the poor harvest, which raised grain prices by 50%, and we rioted even more as our economic situation worsened. Our discontent can be furthered by a political club. They can use us to fight for what we both want. They can link our economic protests to the political demand for a republic whose representatives were directly elected by the people, by the groups in the assembly gaining power. Our rise to power by supporting the Cordeliers and being radical is a way to get what we want. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you very much. Now, unfortunately, we've run out of time today, but we will now hand you over to Jenny's hour uh, for the other half of the show. Thank you. Welcome back. Now we will be discussing the Champ de Mars massacre. Our guest today is Maximilian Robespierre, a representative of the Jacobin Club, but first, here is a quick background of the massacre. Tens of thousands of people flocked to the Champ de Mars to sign a Republican petition on the altar of the fatherland, so the commune declared martial law due to the pressure of the National Assembly. Lafayette and the National Guard were sent to the area and opened fire on a peaceful and unarmed crowd. It is thought that perhaps as many as 50 people were killed. Now let's get an opinion from Robespierre. So, how did the massacre impact you and the Jacobins? Many of us have Republican tendencies, so we were all outraged at the response by the National Guard. This is another reason why the King is becoming increasingly unpopular. And the Jacobins reject the notion of the monarchy, and I'm sure many others will too. Well, we have a statement from George Danton, who represents the Cordeliers, and he agrees with you to some extent. He says that the Champ de Mars massacre further supports the shift towards republicanism as the Assembly has acted disgracefully, particularly as this event is greeted with pleasure in the Assembly. Do you think this is the case? Yes, I very much agree. The National Assembly will live to regret this. And of course, there is the new reformed Huons, who left the Jacobin Club. They are more determined than ever to make an agreement with the King and currently control the Assembly. The moderates also want to compromise with the king. What do you think of this? Well, I think this is a move that will not be beneficial to them, as long-term success will depend on Louis's cooperation, and Louis will be anything but cooperative, so it will be a waste of time, and they will humiliate themselves. Do you think that the massacre has sparked a strong counter-revolution? Yes, there is growing fear of counter-revolution by the emigres, as more and more aristocrats are fleeing from France due to the threat from the revolution. Well, we have an insight into the views of the Assembly, and they seem to be worried about the desertion of army officers, and there has been talk of two laws being passed in November, one of which would reg regard emigres as traitors if they do not return. Where do you think the emigres have fled to? It is likely they have gone to Austria, and perhaps to go to the small German states too. Even if these laws are passed, it is almost certain that the King will veto these laws, further undermining the revolution, I can guarantee that this will fuel the revolution even further. Okay, well now for the now the Furons seem to be the group that is dominating the assembly. So do you think that there has been a significant shift towards republicanism? Well, the Furons will last in the assembly due to ever-growing hatred towards the king. Their ideal for constitutional monarchy will over be overshadowed by the growing republicanism and radicalism among the people. Since the Pulots are in control for the moment, do you think that this growing Republican, Republicanism shift will have an impact on the Assembly straight away? This will take a little bit of time, but as I see, it's much of the population, the flight to Varennes and the Champ de Mars have been the triggers for a shift towards Republicanism, and I am sure that this will continue. Thank you for your time, and have a good evening.